Um, I guess that sort of dovetails into the show Hunted because we uh, good. we All right, good. came yes. up with that hypothetical before we watched the show Hunted. I still haven't seen it, but having now watched that show, do you think our plan of I think you're going to record on cassette tapes and leave them in an unmarked envelope sent somewhere that was going to be how we continued the show? Do you think that would work? Okay, so here's what I I studied Hunted. I was so repulsed by that show and the idea of that show and our surveillance society and like the glorification of it. But I also could not stop watching it. And mostly it was within mind. How would I go in this situation? And I've learned a lot, Charlie. Firstly, I've got to make friends in the seek community because when it comes to a game of hide and seek, you you need a seek on your side because they are the nicest people and so happy to just. You mean the religious sex? Yes. Seeks. Right. They are. Okay, right. <laughs> Honestly, the greatest people and very much up for looking after somebody within their own community. So firstly, in this scenario, one of the things I really want to put in place at the moment is friends in the seat community. I know that's like, okay. it seems like a weird one, but I'm just going to try to make some friends in the seat community. Well, they we... were out here after the floods in the Northern Rivers. They drove their food truck up here that's and right. handing out food. So it's a good chance you could. If there is any Sikhs who listen, to this podcast, I would love to just like, you know, can you give me an intro into the community? That is that is one of my big takeaways from it. The second thing is that you need potential to be able to change your appearance. Like that's something that is a really big thing because, because there are so many ways for you to be observed. Like I'd never really thought through disguise as much. I think we've really got to lean into the idea that we've got to have, be able to have a series of disguises. So like what that means is the most successful people on Hunted, they started with a look that could gradually be changed. So like at the start, I was like, it's weird this show. There's a lot of people with full beards, you know, like on TV, yeah. you don't generally see yeah, it yeah. or like it's the survive. They, these guys look like the people at the end of Survivor, not at the start of Survivor. But cunningly, I realized well, of course, that was because it's harder for you to grow a beard during the time that you're trying to be away. But what you can do is that you can shave a beard during that time. Like, you know, you can shave I love that. the idea of you not realizing that until the competition right. started and just sitting in your hiding spot, like furiously trying to sprout a beard. And we all know how terrible I am at growing a beard. So I've really <laughs> got to put in a few months beforehand. And then some makeup skills. I think oh, yeah. one of the like you know, handiest things to have is makeup skills. So like, um, you know, the ability to be able to like, you know, apply makeup, change my appearance in that way is something that I think we really, like I really need to develop. So I think that I need to firstly move a whole bunch of clothes, like a wardrobe full of clothes into the cave. Like previously to this <laughs> happening, I just need to fill the cave. The cave needs to look like a walk-in closet, like a walk-in yeah. sort of like, Cave. Yeah, next and, stop model. Yeah, exactly. I've got to have like some mirrors with lights around them, you know, that sort of thing. So I can do my yeah. makeup properly and a whole wardrobe in my cave. I think that's going to be very important so that I can throw people off the scent. We were right about the fact of getting out in the middle of nowhere. Like the more you stay in the city and stuff, the more chance you are that somebody or something's going to observe you on there like security cameras and those sort of things. So, so on, on the show, do they yeah. show you how like easy it is to find someone with CCTV yeah. and like ATM cameras and. Yeah, of course the thing they do on the show that they can't do in real life yet, all those shows like this, you know, pave the way for it is immediately access those things. So on this show, if you were a team of people and you walked into a shop, they'd be like, Oh, look, there's a security camera in the corner. We're going to access that security camera footage. Now, of course, a Channel 10 TV show can't just ring up a random shop and say, can we have your CCTV camera? And then immediately have it in real time. They would then cheat it for TV where the camera crew that were following the people around, they'd use that footage clearly to right. yeah, recreate what they potentially could do. So the things that they could do on the show, it would take much longer to access that particular, you know, ATM security camera or whatever it is than it would. So, I think we've got a little bit of a buffer, but you essentially need to, the more you can be off the grid. And the thing is, you don't want to camp in the middle of nowhere because of course drones, right? Dr if yeah. you're in the middle and if they suspect you're in the middle of nowhere, the immediate thing they're going to do is send drones. So I think a cave, like I think that we stumbled on in a lot of ways, a cave in sort of like a forested area. 
somewhere where you can scavenge for your own needs and supplies, access to a water source, relative cover from like, you know, drones being able to spot you away from any sort of surveillance and keeping those things to a minimum. That was a good approach. So I'm going to say like we nailed all that aspect of it. I want to film a cave with some different costumes and some makeup equipment. And then in regard to actually recording the podcast itself, this is where things get tricky because like any sort of electronic communication, that's where you can get intercepted and monitored. So that's, that's where it's hard. So I still think that some sort of like blind drop off or to be honest, meetups, but then you're going to have to throw your tail. So yeah. what what they did in this show was they were going, they'd go through your social media or whatever, and they'd be like, who are their contacts? Who are their primary contacts? We're going to go and like surveil the house of, you know, this person because they're the most, li- they're in this area. They know this person in this area. They're the most likely person that they're going to contact in this area. So people are going to know that you, so they're going to be on your tail. So now it's up to your capacity to, do you think that you would be able to in your day-to-day life no okay all right so no. let's rule that out okay i think i was thinking i was just thinking about that like is it no. possible to launder the tape so just say you have to get a cassette tape to me no. so i can keep uh-huh. doing the podcast uh-huh. in my head i'm uh-huh. like what if we could train like a pigeon uh-huh. or an eagle uh-huh. like you have a falcon uh-huh. you become a falconer and you uh-huh. train a falcon and so you record you record that your end of the uh, of the podcast and then you get the falcon there's a train it to drop it off at a certain uh-huh. point and then we get a third party who has no, like maybe I contact them anonymously uh-huh. and say, hey, there'll be $100 in your bank account every Wednesday. You just need to drive to this mm-hmm. field and pick up this package and then just leave it in this other spot. So we just launder it that way, like put another layer in between. So at least if, you know, someone does get tracked or whatever, it doesn't come directly back to me, at least not at first. Okay. So complicated though to do that training is what i would say that i think i feel like that's yeah i feel like that's too like if we were going to do a falconer we might as well just have a drone of our own right you know it's got a drone (laughs) (laughs) uh one of the things they did quite effectively on the show was create a false trail like throw them off the scent so for example if I need to get somebody to use, say, like my credit card or whatever in a particular town that was like two hours away. And then like two two days later, you make a trip to that particular town. Oh, yeah. That They think then that the podcast has been recorded in that time. Even though like yeah. you go inside somewhere, they can't get inside. The podcast comes out. They assume it's happened during that time. But what they don't realize is that when you rode your bike to the gym that day, when you went into the gym, you ducked out the back of the gym into the bushes where I was waiting and we just sat in the bushes, recorded a podcast. You went back into the gym and then just came out the front all like sweaty and stuff. And they didn't know that we'd recorded a podcast. How about we set up a fake Mm. live show as Uh, like a sort of speed style. uh, So sure we have to do it early. So Mm. we know you've got like 48 hours. So we go into the bushes, we set Mm. up cameras and we record Mm. a bunch of live podcasts Mm -hmm. and then we make an announcement that, oh, we're doing a live TOEFOP. And so the people hunting you are like, oh, great. Well, we'll just wait for the signal. And so we, you know, we put a, we use a VPN, fake IP address. We played the episode through that VPN, through that IP, uh, uh, um, uh, through that IP address. And so they get taken. They think they're going to like, you know, the woods in Tasmania uh, or something like that. Yeah. That'll work once. Yeah. Right. And then after that, they're going to be like, well, He's wearing the same T-shirt. They've pre-recorded all of these. Yeah, but that's fine. Like that gives us, if we pre-recorded a whole bunch of them, that then gives me a couple of like months in the cave, right? To come up with another well, plan. No, like, uh, <laughs> well, let's be honest. Like, <laughs> we pre-recorded three. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, we get tired. We've got other things we need to do. <laughs> right. You've got to get a wardrobe moved into a cave. You've got things to do. So like we pre-recorded three. So we've got, like, <laughs> got that's still like a month's worth. Well, that's still like three and a half weeks. I've got three and a half weeks to come up with another Do you really plan. think that your hunters are going to wait a week to see when the second episode comes out before they make some inquiries? I think they would investigate the first one, realize they've been duped, and then they would just recalibrate. Their How attack. would you go under question? So this is like one of the most important things that I've realized is like a lot of this entire plan depends on your capacity 
to hold up your end of the story when you've got a bunch of like officials like questioning you hard and like you know like making well, threats you know to it's funny like like two weeks ago or three weeks ago i would have been like oh terrible but I've been watching a lot of leftist, um, you know, slash socialist communist uh, YouTubers lately uh, uh. who are very uh, anti-cop. And, you know, a lot of them will play videos of like ordinary citizens, like this is how you respond to questioning by yep. police and you don't have to give them this and you don't have to give them that. And I watched this video of a teenager, uh, like he was a teenager in somewhere in the States and he flipped off a cop car that drove past oh, yeah. and the cop came by. And, you know, it was harassing him and then called for backup and they were trying to arrest him. And this kid knew his shit so well, was just like, you can't arrest me. I can fucking flip you off. That's free speech, First Amendment rights. I know what I'm doing. And the cops are like, you're creating a public disturbance. It's like, hang on, I didn't create the public. I was walking along the street. You pulled the car over. You, this is the disturbance now. What you cops are doing now, this is the disturbance. And the cop's like, well, we're going to arrest you. Like, for what? Wait, fuck you, fuck you. It starts like, just like, and I'm like, oh my God, this kid is amazing. So if I could just summon some of that kind of, that, that energy of that 17 year old fucking socialist that I saw on YouTube, then yeah, yes. I could probably do it. I mean, that's who you really need, like on your side in yeah. this scenario, is like one of those, or that a like, cocky teenager. Just a cocky teenager who doesn't give a fuck about authority, who's just like, what are you going to do about it? Fuck you. <laughs> He was literally calling this cop a motherfucker to his face. You can't do it, it motherfucker. Amazing. I know my law. I'm a lawyer. I'm actually, actually like a doogie ha I'm have. like a doogie <laughs> hauser of law. I actually know my shit back to front for this scenario. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, that's right. To see the full video, join our Patreon. Patreon.com slash TOEFOP.